are you God? In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, John chapter 2, that's our word. The Bible says, On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited in the wedding, and when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your, uh, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. The mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were set there six waterproof, uh, water pots of, of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing twenty or thirty gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them to the brim. And he said to them, Draw some out now, and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and did not know where it came from, but the servants who draw, had drawn the water near the master of the feast, called the bridegroom. And he said to him, Every man at the beginning, sets out the good wine and when the guests have well drunk then the inferior you have kept the good wine until now this beginning of signs jesus did in cana of galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed him after this he went out he went down to Can capernaum he his mother his brothers and his disciples and they did not stay there many days may god bless his word Amen. I want to declare, or rather, uh, uh, talk on a subject that I'm calling God, you are inexhaustible source of supply. You are inexhaustible, I mean, supply that cannot be exhausted. Amen. Whatever God does, He does in abundance. God is a God that loves increase. The first instruction He gave at the Garden of Eden was that go multiply increase and fill the earth the bible says god who teaches us my hands to profit the bible says in every labor there is profit he is god that loves increase for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life he planted jesus as a seed and he harvested so many sons including you and i that is born again so it's God that loves increase. And so that is to tell you that his fountain never runs dry. And I pray in the name of Jesus, anything you are looking for, anything you are desiring, in his will, you will have it in abundance. You will have it in excess. In the mighty name of Jesus. He doesn't look at how things are. God does not survey how things are so that he can know the possibility or the probability of the miracle happening it doesn't matter what is happening he can cause water to come in the desert in a dry ground he commanded Moses uh, you know to produce water from a stone that's the God I'm talking about in a desert he commanded meat birds to come from nowhere and they were feeding the children of Israel in their millions is God that told Elijah, relax, I'm going to send ravens. And ravens came faithfully, delivering meat to the men of God. And if God could do that then, the Bible says it's the same yesterday, is the same today, and it's the same forever. If he could do that then, he can do it in 2020. He can do it in May 2020. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus. He will do something in your month of May 2020, the month of grace, something that cannot be defined, something that can only happen by the grace of God, that you'll be able to say like Paul, it is only by the grace of God. It is beyond my efforts, it's beyond my ability, it's beyond my certificates, it's beyond my enablement, it is only by the grace of God. I prophesy that dimension is coming your way in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to God. So this is a wedding and the wedding has run short of supply. And I want to get a picture from here. Wine was a very, very necessary element in the wedding. 
and you know in the culture of the Jews they value what they called wine. Wine was a very valuable thing. And then the wine ran uh they ran short of the wine. They were they ran short of the wine. But the running short of the wine was an opportunity for God or rather for Jesus to perform his first miracle. I pray that what you are seeing as a challenge or what is coming to your life as an obstacle, as a limitation, as a drawback will be turned into an opportunity for a miracle in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, there was no resurrection without death. There was no healing without sickness. There was no supply without lack. There was no deliverance without bondage. So I declare your situation will bring glory to the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, that blindness will bring glory to the Lord. That limitation will bring glory to the Lord. Some of you watching me there, probably you have been laid off at your place of work. Or there is a threat. You are told that we are about to reduce the employees. And you don't know well where you're going to begin. You don't know how to go about it. Maybe the person who used to supply the goods that you sell for your business as as you know is pulling out of business and you don't know where to come from. I want to tell you the truth. The wine that is produced by men can run short. It can cut off, it can be cut off. When the Lord opened my eyes into these scriptures, I realized that there are things that men can give you. There's if your if your source is a man, man is mortal. But the Bible says, 1 Timothy 1, 17, to him who is immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Man is mortal. God is immortal. Man can promise you today and tomorrow they are swept by floods or landslides and they are no longer. You die, I mean, they disappear with your promise. But let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that God we serve is a God that was, is a God that is, is a God that shall be. He is already in your future. He already knows what you are going to face as a challenge. He is God that says, my God shall supply all your needs through the Apostle Paul according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. That is to mean that all your needs are supplyable. All your needs are supplyable. There is no need that is not supplyable. There is no need that is not meetable. If I may use, if I may corrupt a bit of English words. There is no need that is not meetable. And if what you need is not available, it can be fabricated. It can be fabricated. He is also a creator. He is also a creator. The wine was cut short. And at a time like now, I think it is a great opportunity for people to learn. And I've come to learn that sometimes we idolize our careers. We idolize our jobs. We exhort our jobs. How many people who have sacrificed an opportunity to serve God so that they may rest, maybe because they are tired from their job. Or how many people have sacrificed their relationship with God just for the sake of their business, their career, and they have, you know, uh, 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 behaved like, you know, their place of work is their source and ended up now with all the challenges that are available. And, you know, things are looking like they are locked down. They are locked off. Supplies are cut. People's expectations are low. You know, that's when the Bible says, I will look upon the mountains from whence does my help come from. My help comes from the Lord. And then I came to realize that even the job you are doing is not your source. It's just a resource. Your source is God. Your source is God. Anything from man can stop. Anything from man can stop. You can even from America can stop. Amen. Amen. Those that were receiving maybe aid from the Western countries, the Western countries are, are looking above. They are also praying that God may provide for their needs. Those that were expecting somebody maybe, you know, to do something for them, everybody that had promised you something has a good excuse. They can always remind you, Unajua vile kuko. You know how things are. And you will nod in, in acceptance and agreement. You will nod in agreement and say, yes, I know how things are. But God will never say that. I've not heard him say, you know how things are. I've never heard him say, uh, it's a difficult time. Because it's God that can create times and seasons. It's God that can change things in your favor. He can turn a dry land into a well-watered land. Glory to Jesus Christ. He can turn a barren womb into a mother of nations. He can turn a man in his in his. Uh, you know, in his later later years, a man that is uh, aged to become a father and make him a father of a great nation. 
That is the God we are talking about. May your dryness be dealt with. May your emptiness be dealt with. May everything that looks like a dilemma, may the Lord tackle it in the name of Jesus Christ. Things are changing for your good in the name of Jesus Christ. Your wedding will not be without wine. Oh, I say your wedding will not be without wine. Your family will not be without what you need. Your children will not be without school fees. Your family will not be without supply. You will not be without ability to pay your bills. I prophesy your wedding will not lack wine. Make sure Jesus is in the wedding. The only problem you can do is to be so sure that the suppliers are enough and you lock Jesus out. Because what is supplied by men can be cut off. It can be exhausted. But what God supplies, and that's why even for those that are, you know, are encouraged to pursue God spiritually, uh, uh, sometimes we love to go for men of God for impartation, which is good and very important. But impartation gives you uh, uh, a grace or opens you up to what certain men have conquered. But an encounter will place you close to God, will place you at the presence of God, and an encounter will give you a first-hand encounter and experience with God. Because a man, if, if you only relay on men's encounter for you to receive the testimony of what they saw at the transfiguration, what if you go for the transfiguration on your own? What if you go to the mountain on your own? Because if you only depend on my testimony, I can decide to stay for one month without giving a testimony. How will you be lifted? But if you know how that the, the veil is torn and you can go to the mountain on your own, you can climb that mountain and experience the transfiguration, my brother, my sister, you will never run dry. You will never run dry. Don't experience God second hand. Don't experience God secondarily so that somebody else has to pray for there to be a breakthrough in your life. At a time like now, it's very, very important to consider that. That if you only depended on intercessors and you would complain that there is no move of God because intercessors didn't pray, now you know. Now you know. There are intercessors don't come to camp in your house. Intercessors don't come to camp in your house. If the only time you experience a, a, a move in worship is when present worship team is worshiping, now you know. You need to become a worshiper. The Lord is looking for those that to worship in truth and in spirit. At least you can fit there, even if you are not talented in terms of voice, in terms of ability to play instrument. But God is not saying I'm looking for vocals. He says I'm looking for worshippers. I'm not promoting mediocrity, but I'm just saying that everybody now is a worshipper. You can worship from where you are. And by the way, if you are not worshipping the living God, you are still worshipping. Everybody is a worshipper. You, it's only that the deity is different. If you are not worshipping the only true God, you are still a worshipper. If you are not tithing, uh, 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 you are still tithing. If you are not tithing to the altar and to God, you are still tithing. Because at the end of the day, you don't keep the money. You still spend the money. The, the problem is where do you spend the money? Where your heart is, there your treasure is. If you want to know your idol, look at your budget. <clears throat> amen and amen. And so, uh, 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 Jesus is in the wedding. I want to uh, uh, beg you and pray that you make sure, uh, no matter how hard it becomes, Jesus will still be in your house. Praise the name of Jesus. Jesus will still be in the picture. Make sure you don't lock him out. There is a, 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 a skit that we used to act when we were young. And uh, this guy acts like they are, uh, he's driving and then he picks somebody by the road who happens to be Jesus. And then he meets somebody, a beautiful girl, and then he tells Jesus, go to the back seat. The girl stays there. Then he say, he meets somebody else, and then they squeeze Jesus. He keeps uh, lifting people into the car. He squeezes Jesus. At the end of the day, the car is parked, and somebody else wants to join. And then he tells Jesus, he requests Jesus to go to the boot. And Jesus agrees, and he goes to the boot. And then the car gets an accident. Everybody dies. But they happen to find a crate of eggs that is not damaged. No egg is cracked and the, the, all the eggs are intact. And then what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the moral of the story is that where Jesus is, the security. They put Jesus in the boot, the eggs were in the boot, and the guys were there comfortably, but again, as the, we know without Jesus, they locked Jesus out and they all died. So I want to tell you the truth. If you want to remain, if you want to stay secure, to stay relevant, make sure you are uh, you are you don't lose him 
you don't lose your contact with him because the wine of men can be exhausted but the wine of Christ can never be exhausted now listen to this Mary says uh, uh, Mary goes to Jesus and says the wine uh, uh, you know the wine has been uh, depleted or the wine has been uh, used up they have run they have no wine and Mary had never seen Jesus perform a miracle Mary had never seen Jesus perform a miracle. The only miracle between her and Jesus is a miracle of conception. But you know what interests me so much is that Mary had never seen Jesus perform a miracle because this happens to be his first miracle. But it's like she had already investigated the protocols of the kingdom to understand that when such a things happen, I need to place a demand on him. I need to acknowledge him. Anything and any area that God has exposed you to, make sure you learn the protocols and the procedures that surround that area and that field. And she says they have, they have no one. She placed a demand on him when he was not willing because he answered her what would rather be considered to be rudely. Scholars will have different opinions about it. He said, uh, a woman, don't you know that it's not yet my time? And uh, uh, Mary was quiet about that. Mary was quiet all that time. Woman, don't you know that? Uh, don't you know that it's not yet my time? You see, her faith, her faith, her faith. I would like to say this: her faith put Jesus in a situation that he had to perform what was not in his time. I have a feeling that there is a way you can engage your faith, place a demand on God. Acknowledge his presence, acknowledge his deity until what you are supposed to experience 10 years to come, you experience it today. Yes. And I want to pray that at a time like now, when there is crisis all over, you are going to place a demand on God. This is the time to declare you are going to buy land. That land you have been trusting God for. We don't have to wait for things to be okay. Things are okay for us. Our citizenship is in heaven. As he is in heaven, so are we. We see the invisible. We don't see the physical. So we don't have to wait until they announce on the television that now it's okay. For us, it's okay. Jesus is with us. He's our confidence. He's, he's, we are the people that can walk into the battleground smiling because we know I'm going to go back to Jerusalem with the head of Goliath. We don't go to experience, to, to experiment. We go to do. Because we already know that greater is he that is in us than he who is in the world. For this is a victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Glory to Jesus. Amen to God. So this is a time to declare that I'm going to buy land. I'm going to invest. I'm going to build my house. Where is the money going to come from? Jesus is in my life. He's not just in the wedding. Hey, but I am the bride this time round. Hallelujah. He is not just um, an attendee, but I am the bride. He is the groom. How much more will he be willing to perform a miracle for his bride, to supply for his bride? If he could do that in a wedding where he was not the groom, he was not the bride, he was not even in the bridal team, he was not a service provider, he just attended the wedding. How much more do you think he would be willing to get involved now that he's the groom? Hallelujah to God. So, uh, uh, the mother placed a demand on Jesus. When you place a demand on Jesus, things can be pushed in your favor. And I pray that times and seasons are going to favor you in the mighty name of the Lord. Hallelujah to God. And then he said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And then they did exactly that. And the Bible says there was enough wine. All the pots that were filled, as long as they operated in obedience, according to the tutorials that Mary gave them. They took the wine to the wedding manager. And the Bible says when he tested, the wine was better than the previous one. Can I say that? What God brings is better than what men bring. God, God will never measure at the same level of men. Anything that God gives you, a gift that he gives you, comes with no attachment. For the blessing of God bringeth joy and addeth no sorrow. 
glory to God. I pray that anything in your life that has brought sorrow, tears, agony, regrets, wounds, God is going to replace it with his blessing that bringeth joy and addeth no sorrow. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare that the wine of God will be right on your table. The wine that never uh, that tastes better than the one men have supplied. May God give you relationships that are better than relationships that you engineered or that men fixed you into. May God bring to you things that will bring joy in your life. You will count your blessing one by one and you will be surprised at what the Lord has done. Oh, He will give you life. He will give you peace. He will give you joy. He will give you abundance of grace in the name of Jesus. For he is your inexhaustible supply. You can't exhaust him in the name of Jesus. Oh, if you need to borrow vessels, you better borrow vessels. If you need to open up your capacity to expand your tent, you better expand your tent. Because God is coming with a mighty wind, with a, like a mighty water, to bless you, to expand you, to increase you, to, to, to establish you, and to put a distinction between you and they that serve other gods. We cannot cry like others. And that's why I silence every mouth that has been crying that is in the kingdom of God. You have been crying to the wrong people. You have been calling the wrong people. This time round, like Mary, just turn to him and tell him there is no wine, Lord. He will not gossip you. He will not gossip you. You know, at times we share with people our problems and then they gossip us right, left and center. They go around bad mouthing us and you know, uh, uh, you know, destroying us and deflating us. You borrow this from somebody and everybody in the village knows. You become the title of gossip in the village. But when Mary turned to Jesus, Jesus never turned to anybody. He just gave instructions. When your story gets where Jesus is, be sure that's the end of it. And I pray that any gossip around your life will land at the hands of Jesus, at the feet of Jesus. When the woman that was uh, having a blood issue was caught in, I mean the woman that was caught in adultery was brought to Jesus, that was the end of it. When your case is brought to Jesus, plead for mercy, a broken heart and a contrite spirit, he will never reject. I declare mercy will settle your case. Grace will settle your case. The love of God will settle your case. Any struggle in and around your life is settled right now in the name of Jesus Christ. There was no question. There was no controversy. The only question was, why have you given us the best wine at the end? What he never knew is that the wine was also too much. It was good and too much. I declare, receive the best of God and too much of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That's why the children of Israel were told as you leave Egypt, go and borrow golden items. And so that as you leave Egypt, you will have plundered them. I prophesy whatever you are going through, you will not come empty handed. You will not come empty handed. The kingdom protocol is that when you go through it, you come out better. You come out as pure as gold. They plundered Egypt. They came out of Egypt with gold. With, with gold and silver, with the best of material. I prophesy to you, you will come out of that bondage, out of that situation without any evidence of where you have been. In the name of Jesus Christ. When Paul and Silas were released from prison, the jailer, the jailer nursed their wounds. I pray that your wounds will be nursed. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a force that will compel every negative power to work in your favor. The force of favor, the force of grace, the force of the love of God will compel the ravens to bring things at your table. Things that cannot happen naturally, scientifically, and logically are going to be natural in your life because you don't live in this world. Oh, your citizenship is in heaven. Child of God, our citizenship is in heaven. If you are not born again and you are watching me, you better join this bandwagon so that you may sing together that we know our Redeemer living. I know the Lord that I serve, for the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The psalmist said, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Listen to me. The psalmist knew if there is a shadow, there is light. 
For if there is a shadow, there is light. For if I'm in the valley of the shadow of death, it means there is light somewhere. And the Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. The word of God is a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. He leadeth me in green pastures. That is to mean that there is supply for me. There is providence for me. There is protection for me. I pray that you will lose sight of the valley of the shadow of death and focus on the light. Hallelujah. And God is not just your light, but he has made you the light. The Bible says we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. So darkness is, is our absence. The definition of darkness is our absence. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. You will not be stranded where you are. God is holding your hand. God is leading you. God is taking you where you belong. To the glory and honor of his name. After that miracle, the Bible says they believed him. Can you be available and willing and have faith that God may be glorified through you? Therefore, I want to encourage you. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know the situation you are in. But whatever you are going through, sometimes even men of God go through a lot. Yesterday, I was just reading one of the books by uh, Bishop Dr. Alao, one of the men I love so much. He's a mentor from Port Harcourt, Nigeria. And he was saying that he's a medical doctor, uh, but now he's in full-time ministry. But when he had, uh, you know, when he finished college, he was assigned a pediatric department in the in the hospital. And uh, it was like he was very good with children, such that even the senior pediatricians begged him to be in that department. And then his son, his first son, I actually learned from the book that he had a son because I only know his three daughters, fell sick and within one week he died. And it was a very, very disturbing situation because everybody in Port Harcourt was talking against him and wondering, he's a man of God, he's a pastor, he's also a, a doctor in charge of children. Why can his son die? What damaged him most was that and at the church, somebody said <laughs> from the pulpit, may God forgive his sins. So he is nursing a wound, and then somebody is still, you know, inflicting more wounds. That may God forgive his sins. And he went and cried before God. It was a very depressing situation until he left Nigeria. He came to Uganda, became a missionary there, and uh, prospered, and then God spoke to them to go back to Nigeria and he's preaching all over the world now he's healed but I try to imagine how a man of God can go through such a situation sometimes you can't explain he's a good medical doctor uh, especially with children and he's also a man of God how can your son die that was a question and I'm trying to imagine I don't know what you're going through what you face could be an intercessor you could be somebody that has been waiting upon the Lord encouraging people right left and center but now you have to beg from the same people you have been laying hands on. Maybe you have to uh, struggle to negotiate with your creditors because you are not able to keep deadlines. But I am here to announce to you that the Lord who supply never runs dry. God who has never run into a crisis meeting. <laughs> there is no time that God ever said we are having a shortage of rain or we are having a shortage of sun. There is no enough light. Not God. Until he has to check what can we do, Gabriel? What can we do, Holy Spirit? No. It has never happened. I mean, he is answering prayers all over the world right now. Now, right now. He's listening to so many people praying at the same time. He who watches over Israel never sleeps, never slumbers. Your case is not distinct. Fix your eyes on God. Cast is a man that trusts a man. This time round, I want to encourage you. Get your eyes off men and fix your eyes on Jesus. You will be surprised that the things that you are talking about, the things that you need, are actually secondary. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. If you get God, everything else you need is secondary. And trust him and place a demand in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you so much, and the Lord expand you and increase you, and may his light shine upon your life. 
I want to make a prayer for you and pray prophetically because it's just a prophetic word in my heart and my spirit is boiling and it's only that I'm sitting down I think if I was preaching in church I would be all over so I want to pray for you and I want you to uh, to allow an intersection between the ability of God and your demand lift up your faith place a demand right now and I want to tell you the truth it will not happen tomorrow. It will happen now. In the name of Jesus. We serve the God that told invalids, rise up, take up your mat, and go. Take up your mat and go. Our till number is supplied uh, uh, there. I just hope somebody is online who is able to give our till number 697163. And uh, in case you want to give a prophetic offering, you want to give your normal offering today, Sunday, and uh, maybe for your week, if you want to give your tithe and your offering, you can use that number. And then I'm going to pray for us to the glory and honor of the name of God. And I want, I just want you to believe that God is able. He's able to preserve you. He's able to supply, provide. Anything you need is available. If you are not born again, the first transaction you can do with God is to give your life to Jesus. Pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me. I acknowledge that Jesus died and resurrected that I may be saved. Today, I give you my life. I receive the life of God into me. And I lay my broken life on your altar that I may receive your life. I lay my broken past on your altar that I may receive your justification. I receive you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want us to pray in life with God and slave in my heart. And I know that there is going to be a blessing of supply in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you because of your love, your power, your grace, and your goodness. Lord, we come against any satanic power and force that would hinder the flow of your move and of your word. I take authority and power over the prince of the kingdom of the air. I bind you in the name of Jesus right now. I rebuke every corruption, every discouragement, and every distortion of the word of God. And right now I pray that the power of God will move mightily into somebody's life and bring a shift, a change, a redirection in the name of Jesus. I pray that anybody's wedding, anybody's project that lacks one, anybody's plan that lacks the counsel that would bring the wine factor, anybody's family that is lacking the wine, right now by the power of the living God, by the creative power of the Holy Spirit and of God, I declare wine is supplied right now. Receive wine for your ministry. Receive wine for your business. Receive wine for your career. Receive wine for your business. Receive wine in the name of Jesus. Lord, I declare that even at a time like now, we are receiving wine for the season. Oh, Rapolia Pakahanda Bagade. Wine for the season. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare and decree we cannot be dry, we cannot be stranded, we cannot be put off sign. In the name of Jesus, Satan, pack and go. Pack and go. Loose families, loose children, loose ministries, loose careers, loose destinies. Right now. Right now, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, I declare and decree that your grace will be sufficient. We will not uh, uh, be discouraged and disturbed. 
Thank you because what you are releasing is in abundance and excess. I just feel a word coming to my spirit from the book of uh, Isaiah 54. And I'm going to prophesy to you to Isaiah 54. Blessed be the name of God. Oh, the storm is over. Oh, the storm is over. The storm is over, child of God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Sing, O barren, you who have no born. Break forth into sin and cry aloud. Allowed. You who have not labored with child, God is about to give you things you have never handled. God is about to push you to a dimension where you have never experienced before. It will not be a repeat of your past. It will be a new all experience in the name of Jesus. I prophesy to you, it is happening right before your eyes in the name of Jesus. For more are the children of the desolate woman, abundance, increase, multiplication, inexhaustible. More are the children of the desolate woman, the condition notwithstanding, than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Not man, not the government, not a World Health Organization, but the Lord. Hallelujah. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and lengthen your stakes. Behave like Noah. Noah began to expand. Noah began to build an ark before there was rain. And everybody was surprised, what can a man build such a big thing for 120 years? He was expanding the tent. He was seeing the supernatural. I pray that your eyes will open up and you're going to be acting in accordance with what is registered in the supernatural. The Lord is saying, expand your tents. Build your capacity. Get ready for more. Buy more chairs for that church. Buy more instruments for that church. The churches may be closed, but God is saying, open up. You know, increase your capacity. Oh, hallelujah to God. Buy instruments for crusades. There is no gathering, but you see crusades. You see a season that is coming that is beyond where you are. I declare in the name of Jesus, receive grace, wisdom, and confidence to expand your capacity. The Bible says, for you shall expand to the right. Come on, hallelujah to God. And to the left, that's your word right now. You will expand to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations in the name of Jesus and make the desolate cities inhabited. That's your promise in the name of Jesus Christ. I say in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I read verse 5, For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. For the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, like a youthful wife, when you were refused, says our God. For a mere moment I have forsaken you, but with great mercy I will gather you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, though in compassion I, I, I struck you, but as though in anger I struck you, in compassion I will show you mercy. And here he says that, uh, he will gather us by his great masses. Again, what God supplies will always be great. You remember uh, Ephesians chapter 2, his great mercy and incredible love. It's always in abundance. He's always in supply. I see a cup running over in the name of Jesus. I see a cup full and running over. Your neighbors will enjoy the overflow. Passerbys will see the overflow. I declare and decree it will happen from now and not tomorrow, from now. I say from now. May highways be open. May your lines fall on pleasant places. In the name of Jesus Christ, you cannot remain the same. You cannot be tied where you are. You cannot die where you are. I rebuke discouragement. I rebuke the spirit of giving up. And I declare strength right now. You are stronger than yesterday. You are stronger than yesterday. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run and never get weary. They shall fly and they shall never faint. It is your time. It is your season. And it is now. It is now. And I feel like I need to declare to somebody there. Some things that you are supposed to receive two years to come. By the favor of God. And by the demand of faith. I see things. I see your calendar adjusted. I see your calendar adjusted. 
I see your calendar adjusted. I see your calendar adjusted. I see your calendar adjusted. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I see wisdom that would have come to you at old age coming to your life right now. Amen. Your counsel will be the counsel of the wise. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Why? Because the source of your wisdom is God. It's not books. It's not men. By the Holy Spirit. Amen. He teaches you things that are beyond imagination. Sure. Hallelujah. Amen. He who searches the mind of God is right in you. Yes. And he is now depositing mm. the images, the ideas, the supernatural ideas. Mm. You will expand your business in a way that nobody has ever imagined mm. by the wisdom of God. Sure. You will manage and govern your family in a way that nobody has ever imagined mm. by the wisdom of God. Yes. You will move in your relationships in a way that nobody has ever imagined mm. by the wisdom of God. Receive it nice. in Jesus' name. Amen. And with the love of God and uh, from my family and my friends and the ministry of EMI. We want to say thank you as we sign out. God bless you so much for joining with us. Make sure you share your gift and you share your giving. Let uh, the fact that churches are not gathering be a reason why you're not giving. You must be giving and delight in giving in the name of Jesus Christ. Help the poor around you. Help the poor around you. Make sure a widow is not dying. Practice exists. You may not have too much but what you have you can share. Share with somebody. Bless somebody. Make sure you don't laugh when you see people going hungry. Supply, feed them, bless them. It is a seed you're planting and you are practicing just exactly what Jesus would have done in Jesus' mighty name. And to the mothers that are watching me, mothers that will watch later, I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. It is an amazing thing to be a mother. A mother is a wonderful figure, a wonderful figure. We are all are products of what our mothers, you know, deposited in us and how they shaped us. And all of us have an image of when mommy probably would carry uh, items to feed us, help us around and do a lot for us. It is an amazing thing. Mothers, God bless you and strengthen you. Stand for your families. Fight for your families. Uh, the other day we were praying and the Lord ministered to us about Sarah when she saw that Ishmael was messing with her seed that is Isaac, she rose up in protest and she said, no, 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 no. You cannot treat him that way. And the Lord told Abraham, listen to your wife. And therefore I want to pray that every mother there, don't watch your family go down. You can't just cry. Rise up, petition it before God. Sarah went to Abraham. You can go to the God of Abraham. Your children oppressed by, this, by Ishmael. Rise up. Could be drugs. Could be bad company. It could be uh, false doctrine or anything else. Tell the devil you can't mess with is Isaac. I bore him in my womb. I know the pain of labor of bringing him forth. I can't let you do that. Mothers, you are the only ones that can do that. And I challenge you, may you rise up as a mother in Israel and in this land. Declare that they will not die of corona. And if you are a woman, whether a woman uh, per se, a mother or a potential woman, a girl, all this is about you. Rise up and say, the children you are born in Kenya will not die of coronavirus. Rise in defense. Hold your womb and pray like a mad woman. Don't worry what people will say. When the results will manifest, results will silence the insults in the name of Jesus Christ. And so I, I challenge you, mothers are the only people that, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, know the pain of the baby, know the pain of the people. They are the only people that lost their shape to give us shape. Amen. That's para, a, a bit of a, a parable. But mothers lose shape, shaping us. Amen. Some of them conceived us with a flat tummy. And then after giving us shape, they were left with a bulging flesh. They lost shape to give us shape. Mothers are the only ones that you give, uh, uh, receive a seed and give back a child. You give them a house, they give you a home. You give them uh, uh, an, 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 an egg, they rear chicken because they have been given an ability to incubate. And therefore I want to prophesy to every woman whose womanhood per se, quote unquote, uh, uh, you know, I'm looking for a Swahili word. Lakini ambaye uwezo wake wakua mama, not really about productivity, but everything that entails femininity. Anybody whose femininity has been taken away. Maybe you are a mother, 
You're supposed to be a mother to your children. But we see today mothers killing their children. The other day I saw a girl in Kayole stab her two children to death. That's 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 very devastating. Uh, uh, you're, you're a wife. You're supposed to be a wife. And the wifehood has been corrupted or taken away or eliminated. And you're no longer acting like a wife. You're just acting like a, another female just in the house. And uh, we, there's, there's what we expect of a woman. There's what we expect. When you begin to see woman marrying a woman, something is wrong. When you begin to see tomboys and all these girls that behave like men, something is wrong. Therefore, I declare in the name of Jesus, anything you lost through false teachings, through demonic attacks, through satanic attacks, through an upbringing that corrupted your life or things you went through and they have quenched your femininity, it is restored today by the power of God. It is restored today by the power of God. Your children will find a mother, your husband will find a wife, your colleagues will find a female friend in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray those that are trusting God to get married, God will not bring somebody that will quench who you are, but somebody that will encourage you, somebody that will lift you and change your story. In Jesus' name, with love. With